Biological weapons have been around for a long time, but the COVID-19 crisis could alter the way countries look at how biological weapons might advance their security. Christine Parthamore is at the Council on Strategic Risks and co-author of a report called Understanding the Threat of Biological Weapons in a World with COVID-19. Christine, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So for the bad actors out there that could be considering developing a biological weapon, what lesson would they take from the COVID pandemic? We're very concerned about that exact question. And so uh, very early in the pandemic, actually, we endeavored to pull together communities of diverse experts, engage how, uh, how they viewed that particular threat and how bad actors and those who are interested in biological weapons might alter their views or their calculations based on COVID-19. And obviously things have played out and gotten ever more devastating over the past few years of the pandemic. Um, what, from our research, what it shows uh, and what we agree with is that um, we're very concerned that countries that uh, may have considered having biological weapons as a strategic weapon, mostly as a deterrent to keep people out of their borders and stop attacks against them, that there may actually be increasing, uh, increasing interest in using these weapons as well, potentially at a small scale or in hybrid warfare, in addition to maintaining them as strategic weapons. Uh, we're concerned that uh, as devastating as this has been for national security and eco economies around the world, and for the United States and other nations, that unfortunately that might provide a motivation to draw people more uh, to greater interest in these weapons. So globally, has the pursuit of biological weapons been increasing or decreasing recently? Well, thankfully for decades, it was decreasing. Countries like the United States that did experiments in biological weapons in the United Kingdom and others in the past during the Cold War gave those up and stopped the offensive biological research with the advent of the Biological Weapons Convention several decades ago. Uh, as we know publicly, the Russians actually increased their activities after that. The State Department currently publicly assesses that Russia uh, in North Korea may still possess offensive biological weapons programs, and we have concerns about activities by Iran and, and China that might be bordering into the offensive weapons category uh, as well. So we're not concerned about many countries having biological weapons, but any countries having them and potentially using them could be catastrophic for the world. So how do you get the data you need for this study? Because I'm sure this is very classified information. It's not like bioweapons program uh, information is going to be in the in the public sphere? Very little, that's correct. So most of us came from government uh, and have backgrounds in this area, um, though obviously our study is completely unclassified. What we did was uh, took a, a pretty deep and multi-month methodology to mining both history, engaging what a diverse range of experts viewed as the threat. Um, unfortunately, there seemed to be pretty resounding agreement that the devastation caused by COVID-19 for the few countries that were really worried about possessing biological weapons or seeking them in the years ahead, that COVID-19 may have motivated them further in that direction and again, may have them considering potential use. Um, obviously, we, we hope this doesn't come to pass, but with the, the illegal invasion of Ukraine, very concerned about the potential use of chemical or biological weapons in that scenario. Well, did you just look at state actors or did you also research the possibility of terrorists developing and using bioweapons? Uh, a little bit of both. We kept it open-ended, um, but most of our focus was on state-based biological weapons threats. Terrorists have sought biological weapons in the past. Um, certainly, Aum Shinrikyo in Japan and Al-Qaeda and others have sought and sought to actually develop the weapons um, uh, in pursuit of their terrorist ends. Uh, we believe that threat is still there, but we're, we're much more concerned, frankly, about the increasing catastrophic level of a, a full state industrial scale program and what that could do to the world in both upsetting geopolitics and uh, alarming other countries. And it, of course, the potential use of, of such weapons in a dire scenario. So then, Christine, what are the disincentives for bad actors to pursue biological weapons? And how does the U.S. create more disincentives? That's a fabulous question. Uh, and we believe our State Department and uh, other agencies are working hard on exactly that. Um, we promote a, 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 an approach called defense by denial, uh, deter, excuse me, deterrence by denial, 
um, by which we increase our biological defenses and pandemic preparedness in general on the public health side to such an extreme degree that biological weapons, if they were to be used, would not be that effective. So countries would be both risking sanctions and potential retaliation if they were to use these weapons, but also not achieve the ends that they are aiming for. Obviously, the more that we can build the norms diplomatically against biological weapons and unite the world on pandemic prevention, we found that those are powerful things, including, uh, including addressing some of the vaccine inequities that continue to persist around the world so that most countries in the world are convinced that we are better off if we cooperate across nations and work together to reduce all biological threats and make sure no one goes down the path again of biological weapons. All right. Well, Christine, we, let's uh, hope that that happens. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.